Here I've got a nice combinatorial exercise that it's wrapped up inside of a linear algebra packaging from the 1995 Putnam. This is question B3. So let's see what it says. So to each natural number with n squared digits, we want to associate it to the determinant of the matrix formed row-wise by these digits. So let's see, if we've got a one squared digit number, in other words, a one digit number, then we associate it to the determinant of the one by one matrix formed by that number, but that's just the number that we started with. So three just turns into three. Now, what if we've got a two squared digit number, in other words, a four digit number, like this number right here, 1,597, well, we would associate that to the determinant of this matrix 1597, which is equal to minus 38. That's not too hard to check. And then our final goal is to find the sum of all such determinants in terms of n. So we're going to do a couple of cases to get started, and that'll really guide us with what this general solution should look like. Okay, so let's start with this n equals 1 case. But that means we need to sum over just all one-digit numbers. And that's because if we've got a one-digit number, it turns into itself under this process of taking the determinant of the one-by-one one matrix. So in this case, we're summing over all possible determinants, but that's just really summing over all possible one-digit numbers. So we're finding the sum 1 to 9. So that's a well-known triangular number. That's going to be 9 times 10 divided by 2, which is also known as the number 45. Okay, so let's move into the second case when n is equal to 2. So we'll start with the determinant of the smallest four-digit number matrix, and that would be this matrix 1000. So that's the number 1000. So anything less than that will clearly not have four digits. So the next one will be the determinant of 1001. So that's 1001. And then we'll end way up here at the determinant of 9999. So our goal is to calculate that sum. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. That's the same thing as calculating the following quadruple sum. So we can let i range from 1 to 9, and then j, k, and l will range from 0 to 9. And then we're taking the determinant of i, j, k, l. So that's going to allow us to sum over all four-digit numbers. In fact, that's what's happening up here in the determinant of these two bit matrices. Okay, but then let's recall that we can rewrite this using the de definition of the determinant. So we've got still i is going between 1 and 9, and then j, k, and l are going between 0 and 9. And then we've got i times l minus j times k. But now, since this is a finite sum, we can easily split that apart into two sums. So that's going to give us this sum of I L minus this sum of J K. And still, we have I going from 1 to 9, and then we have J, K, and L going from 0 to 9. And that's happening for both of these. And then we'll have the same indexing over here. So i is going from 1 to 9, and then j, k, and l are going from 0 to 9. But let's notice that this sum only depends on the indices i and l. So that means j and k are really just adding this i, l sum together, how many of our copies that we're adding j and k. But notice j and k are going between 0 and 9. So that means for each j and k, we're adding 10 more copies. So in the end, we're adding 100 copies of the sum over i and l. So just to reiterate, we can get rid of this j and k if we multiply by 100 out here. Great. And then we can do something similar over here. So notice this sum only depends on j and k, but since it only depends on j and k, we can think about this i and l index just adding the same sum together, 
how many of our times the index is telling us. But notice I takes on nine possibilities and L takes on 10 possibilities. So if we scrub this, these out, then that means we have 90 copies of this same sum. But now let's notice that since J and K are running from zero to nine, well, multiplying by zero just gives us zero. So we can change this zero to a one without changing anything. And then similarly, we can change this zero to a one without changing anything. And then each of these double sums can be rewritten as the product of two single sums. So notice here we've got this is the sum as i goes from 1 to 9 of i times the sum as l goes from 1 to 9 of l. And then we've got something similar over here. So this is going to be the sum as j goes from one to nine of j, and then the sum as k goes from one to nine of k. But now each of those are easy to calculate just by well, what we had up here. There are all triangular numbers. So that means this guy right here is 45, this guy right here is 45, and then these two are also 45. So let's see what that leaves us with. That leaves us with 100 times 45 squared. That would be like this term right here, minus 90 times 45 squared. That would be like this term right here. But we can think about 45 squared as being like our common term here and factor that out, leaving us with 100 minus 90 or 10 times 45 squared. So we've got a solution for the n equals one and two case. Now we're ready to move on to the larger case. Okay, so, so far we've proven the case when n equals one, our sum is 45. When n equals two, our sum is 10 times 45 squared. Before we jump into the larger cases, I wanna do a quick aside. And that involves answering the following question. What if we allow zero as a first digit? So. In that case, for the n equals two case, we'll have the determinant of zero, 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 plus the determinant of zero, 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 one, plus all the way up to the determinant of nine, 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 nine. So we've got a lot more determinants that we're adding in there. Well, let's quickly calculate it the same way that we did before. So now we're going to sum as i and j and k and l all go from zero to nine of this determinant of i, j, k, l. But now let's recall that we were able to write that as the sum over i and l of i, l minus the sum over j and k of j, k times some numbers out there. And the product of the numbers that went out here were all of the possibilities for K and J. So here there are 10 possibilities for K, 10 for J. So that means there are 100 altogether. And here we summed over all the possibilities for I and L. In the last case, that was equal to 90 because I was only allowed to take values between one and nine. But here it's another factor of 100 because i is now allowed to take on the value of zero. But now these two sums are exactly the same, just with different indices. So that means that adds up to zero. Okay, but that actually gives us a hint for how to solve this in general. So let's quickly look at the n equals three case. So notice in this case, we're gonna be looking at the sum where A1 goes from one to nine, A2 and A3 go from zero to nine of this determinant of A1, A2, A3. And then I'll just put a capital A down here where this capital A is some sort of appropriate, what's it gonna be a two by three matrix? So it's really just a two by three matrix formed from the numbers zero through nine. 
Okay, but now by cofactor expansion, we know that that is going to be the sum over all A1, and I'll call it capital A1, where that's like the sub two by two matrix here, of A1 times this determinant of A1, and then minus the sum over A2 and the determinant of capital A2, and then plus the sum over A3 and the determinant of capital A3. But now each of these can be split up into the product of two sums. So this is gonna be the product of the sum over all possible A1s, and then the sum over all possible determinants of two by two matrices, where we have complete freedom over the entries. And we have complete freedom over the entries because it's this guy right here, which is only forced to be non-zero. So that brings us to the, this question we answered in the aside. That gives us a value of zero for this, and thus a value of zero for those, like kind of symmetrically. And in the end, we get zero. But then we see that nothing special is really going on for n equals three. So this kind of argument will work inductively for larger values of n. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and then we'll sketch that argument out. Okay, now we're ready to finish this off. So building off what we had on the last board, we will inductively assume that if we sum over the determinants of all possible k by k matrices with entries from zero through nine, we get zero. So this is still a bit of a sketch, but I think most of the details are here. And now we wanna look at the k plus one by k plus one case. So here we've got an arbitrary k plus one by k plus one matrix. So I've got my first row is a1, a2, up to a k plus one. To fit in with the problem, I'm requiring a1 to go from one to nine, and all of the other values of a can go from zero to nine. And then this submatrix a runs over all possible k by k plus one matrices. So when I say all possible, I mean the entries here are just zero through nine. And then we'll use the following notation, capital A sub i is a with the ith column removed. So that means when we do our cofactor expansion, that'll be the determinant of that matrix will multiply little a i. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to do it. Okay, so now we'll expand this. So we're still summing over all a, j, because we're summing over all possibilities in the first row, and capital A, where those are over all of these possible k by k plus one matrices. And then doing the cofactor expansion here, we'll have a1, times the determinant of capital A1 minus A2 times the determinant of capital A2, and then this goes on and on and on. But now, just as we saw before, because in a term like this, we're summing over all possible numbers A here and all possible matrices here, we can factor that out because those sums don't depend on each other. So this thing that I've circled will be the sum over all possible A1 of A1 and then the sum of all possible determinants of these matrices, which I've called A1, where A1 runs over all possible K by K determinants. But as we saw on the last board, all of these determinants are going to zero. And that's also part of our induction hypothesis. But that's happening in every part of this sum. So these are all just adding to zero. So in the end, we have our final solution. And that is, for n equals one, the sum is 45. For n equals two, it's this 10 times 45 squared. And for n bigger than or equal to three, our sum is zero. And that's a good place to stop.